What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to explain how the bucket system works and then talk about some of the functionalities of the CLA Mix Hub plugin. So hang in there with me and let's get this thing started. Trap Tendo. So if you really wanna get into this demonstration, here's the timestamp, but I wanna take some time to explain how it functions and why this plugin is special. So Chris Laura Algae, the great himself, the GOAT, has a certain way that he likes to mix his drums, his sounds and all that, and he calls it the bucket system. So with this particular functionality, he is able to mix everything in one set group the way he likes. So what Waze did was emulate his SSL console, so this is not a rehab of the 10 to 15 year old Waze plugins. This is a new algorithm of Chris Laura Algae's mixing console. The other thing that I wanted to point out that people didn't understand, of course in your DAW you can group your mixers, but the true advantage is being able to pull up your EQs and your dynamics or compressor in one window as well. And as engineers, I know you get tired of pulling up each individual plugin at a time to do different EQs and different dynamics where well, you could do it all in one window. Window. So that is huge. So with that, let's get into this thing because I want to show you how it's done. So during this demonstration, please use studio monitors or professional quality studio headphones. I use the Bear Dynamic DT770s for mixing when I don't want to listen to stuff out loud. You know, those are great examples of professional quality headphones. So it's really simple to set this up. All you have to do is look up your CLA Mix Hub plugins, you know, after you install the course. And then you have two different versions. Of course, you have the stereo version and then you have the mono version. I'm going to use the stereo version. I'm going to drag and drop them into my respective tracks that I want to use them in. I'm going to keep on doing it until I have them all. All right, so now I'm going to drag one version into the master bus here. I'm gonna drag it in here, drop it in here, and then I'm gonna put this one in the middle. The other ones are fine the way they have them set up. I'm using that as an example of what to do. So I'm gonna revisit my other tracks here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the track names. If you're on, on the Mac version of Ableton Live or Pro Tools, it will automatically name it. Uh, on Windows, it does not. So I'm gonna go ahead and name them. So that's my Tams. Gonna name this one Tams. And press enter. Go here, add this, name it Shakers. Also, if you're in Ableton Live, of course, you can drag and drop them into your drum rack too as well. So you do have that extra option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab an instance of CLA and I'm gonna drag it into the snare, my dance hall snare that I use. And name this track Snare. So now I'm gonna assign the buckets here. I'm gonna go to bucket view. Now we're in assign. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the assign button. I'm gonna assign the tambourines, shakers, congas, drums, melody, bass, and snare. I'm not gonna assign my master. Then I'm gonna hit this button, boom. And now we're looking at them all. So as you can see here, we have a group up or a bucket. All right, so from this point on, I can change the inputs change the EQs, I can change the dynamic range, and I can adjust the outputs all in this one plugin. So anything that I do right here will be adjusted in all the other tracks. So as you can see, it's really good. Also, I wanna point out that the DSP or the CPU usage is very low off rip. Keep in mind that I am screen recording, so that piles on the CPU or the DSP, and it is doing a very great job as it is. So the demo track that I'm using isn't mixed very well, but that's fine and that's perfect for this example. I want you to hear what this particular plugin does very well. So here's the demo track. Remember, organization is key here. So now that we have the mix hub set up, 
we're going to do things like rearrange. So one of the best tips I can give you that every engineer hates is when a track is not organized correctly. So what you would do is organize your drums to be first. Put your snare, you know, your tambourine shakers and congas and all that. And we're going to have the melody and bass over here. So that's fine. So none of the channels are activated right now. What I'm gonna do is press this on button so that it turns the plugin on. So if it's not on in the particular track, me pressing on right here will activate it in that particular track. So here we go. So I wanna turn down the main melody. So what I'm gonna do is go to my output and I'm going to play it and turn it down from right here. Perhaps I wanna add some simmer and just EQ it a little bit. I can do so right here by selecting the EQ. Now from here, I also can expand it and just look at that particular EQ where I have other options as well, like stereo, duo, and mid to side. So I'm gonna stick with stereo and we're going to listen to it. With the CLA, this is an emulation of the CLA mixing console that he loves to use. So you have your low frequencies and your low mid frequencies and your high mid frequencies and your high frequencies that you can adjust. And it sounds pretty good. I just messed with the high mid frequencies for right now and I'm fine with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. And now we're back into the bucket view where you can see all of them. So that is how you expand that. So perhaps I wanna mess with this snare over here. So I'm gonna go to the snare track and now I'm gonna EQ the snares here so you can see the workflow in action. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so maybe I wanna adjust the snare now in volume. So I could do that as well, going right over here to the output. Okay, so I'm happy with the snare right now, and now I wanna do some other things. Now, here's another area that I haven't talked about yet, and that is the line and mic. So you could do some pretty interesting stuff here. I also wanna point out the, the LEDs right here. As you notice, you see red right here, and all I have to do is look at what's going on. So the drums right here, as the kick is the only other part that's a part of this drums, I might wanna adjust that just because it's in the red. So I did so, and as you can see, the red went away in that example, and now you can hear that it's a little less punchy. Not really what I want, but it's fine. You also can add noise as well. So if we hit this noise, let's hear how the drums sound like without the noise and with the noise. Uh, you can also, uh, within this instance, phase invert as well. So let's go ahead and phase invert. Okay, so you might not hear a difference here. So what I'm going to do is go to the main melody over here. And I'm going to maximize it so you can get a full look at it. You have access to Stereo Duo, which will unleak them. So you can mess with one side. If we go to the output, you can see that the main melody in this instance has a lot going on. So let's go ahead and hear the main melody. 
So you can see the stereo part is going more so to the right than the left. So I might want to go to the input and adjust that using duo mode. So I'm going to go over here to duo mode and maximize and turn up the left side a little bit. All right, so I'm going to make an adjustment to it right now. More, let's add a little bit more of that line in right there. Or we could possibly put some noise in that. So you can definitely do a lot with the phase. So now that you see that S in action there, and we made those adjustments, and you can visualize this mix without doing so much page travel. So this track has a awesome bass line and I want to focus on the dynamics part. So I'm going to click on the dynamics and then you have some other options as well. You can go with the desk or the bluey, which will be represented with the GY changing to blue here. So I'm going to go ahead and add some ratio to this. Go two to one. And I'm going to mess with the threshold and squeeze the bass. So I have some control over the base. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to switch over to the bluey, see if you can hear any difference. So I'm going to go in A and B, the desk and the bluey. So listen closely. One of the main features that I really do like about it is the fact that it has the color system for the LEDs. So for those who don't know, Waze plugins usually have a color LED so that you know that if you're too loud or if you're too low or if you're optimal. So green means good, yellow means optimal, and then red, of course, means that it is too loud. So let's listen and look at it again. Other things that you could do in the dynamics, of course, you can mess with the attack and threshold and you can even expand and you can mess with the release and you can also duck as well. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. So you have side chain buttons as well. So you can side chain to the EQ or even extend side chain, which is freaking incredible, as well as a compressor mix so you can parallel compress. So you can get some of the wet, some of the dry. So perhaps the bucket view isn't your cup of tea and you just wanna go into your channel view. So here's the channel view where you can see how everything works. You can organize the way you want to as well in this view right here, which is the channel view. Uh, you can slide stuff left and right here. This isn't new to this particular plugin, but you can also insert more ways plugins to fit your workflow where they are all organized in this manner. The sky is the limit. Another cool thing that you could do is this right here, which I think is really cool. And that is messing with the polarity. So you can mess with the stereo and mix in mono, which a lot of people like to mix in mono. Or you can reverse, which I just showed you right there. You have extra wide mode. And pan. You can adjust the outputs. You have one fader or two where you can adjust things the way you want. I like view meters like these so you can see how your track is moving. It's important to know what you're doing, especially if you are doing any game reduction or if you just want to monitor the out. 
And this is something I don't really talk about much in my videos, but there is an undo button and you can't help but to be happy about that. You have up to 32 undos, I believe. And yeah, that's really helpful if you do mess up in some any sort. So tell me how you feel about this. I actually didn't like this at first. I, I didn't really understand how this plugin worked, but when I started working with the organization features, then I understood the importance of having one window open and being able to EQ and do all your dynamics all in one window and have access to all your other tracks in that particular window. Also, the fact that it uses low DSP, meaning that the CPU usage isn't crazy, helps with this process. And I was really shocked with that because, of course, we get tired of plugins that use up too much of your CPU, so that way you have to bounce things down, or in the mixing process, you have to just deal with it. So with this plugin, it is very CPU efficient as well, and I like to say, good job, Waves. Thank goodness. So yes, Waves, you get the DJ Admacree stamp of approval.